this is the developer.barclays.com website, which is the, the API catalog for Barclays Bank. Um, my name is Liam. I am the user experience lead for the platform, and I'm joined by Jake, who is our front-end developer and also an accessibility champion for the team. So the platform has hundreds of APIs, um, a mixture between external and internal and private APIs. And we kind of unlock the tech for Barclays Bank on a, a global level. And we now, I think we're supporting over 50 million calls on our APIs per week. Um, the platform is growing exponentially year on year. Um, and we're, we're incredibly proud of what we've got today. And we, we can't wait to show you what we're working on and some of our key key features. One of the, the big things Barclays is, is proud of is our inclusivity. Now, what that means is we, we consider everybody from every walk of life with all sorts of needs and requirements. And we make sure that the platform is fit for, for all uses. So we, we proudly won the best accessible dev portal last year. Um, and it's one of our, our proudest moments as a team because that kind of validates what we're doing as a bank. We, we don't want to be seen as a, a, a bank that builds something and consider accessibility as an afterthought, but it, it permeates through everything we do. So what I will take you through now is the platform and I'll discuss some of these, these um, kind of enhancements and features that we've, we've embedded on the site. And yeah, I'll take you through. So on the homepage, one of the key things you'll notice is we have the ability for users to toggle between dark and light mode. Now, all this, oh, although, sorry, this sounds like a very small um, kind of feature, this is massive for Barclays Bank. Now, Barclays has a very strong brand presence across the globe. Um, we've always been very white and blue. Um, and this just goes to show testament to the bank that we, the way the bank works is we have a central brand team and we had to approach them with our, our plan for going dark mode and our reasons why. Now, there's a couple of reasons we wanted to introduce dark mode. Um, firstly, accessibility. Again, we, we want to be able to give the developers a different contrast. So from our research, we, we, di we did lots of side sits um, and we noticed a lot of our developers tended to use a kind of dark mode. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you can now set a dark mode as a preference on your Mac. Um, and yeah, it, it was it, it wasn't a great experience to just present them with one option, this really bright, glaring platform. Um, so we wanted to swap a, a different different option, and that was dark mode. Um, okay. So secondly, one what I'd like to discuss is the the API platforms catalog. Now, currently we have twenty six global APIs. I say global, 26 public APIs um, on the, the platform, on the catalog. And these are all filterable by region. So you can toggle United States or you can toggle global. And you can also filter these by category. Now, we undertook a, a, massive, um, a massive program this year to consider marketplaces. Now, as I mentioned earlier, with the platform only being a few years old, it's it's growing and we're learning day by day and we're trying to trying to grow it with the bank. Um, now, what that means is our US commerce kind of team, they needed to list APIs for their market across the pond. Um, and originally, everything was bundled together in the catalog. So it wasn't clear what APIs could be used internationally, what could only be used locally. So yeah, we 
undertook this, this task to introduce these regions and again, categories. Now, this is only going to grow. We, we've got plans for enhanced marketplaces in the, the near future, as well as additional filters. So although you could search by category, there could be subcategories, which again, we, we will implement all of these in the future. So you can see at the moment, we've got our open banking APIs, which is a, a UK initiative. Um, and these won't show if a user selects US and so on. So the next thing I'd like to touch on is we spent the best part of last year enhancing our documentation. So previously, our the way our API documentation worked was we had a single markdown file, which API owners completed and submitted to the platform, which we would then upload along with the API. And what that meant was we had a documentation page as well as an overview. Now the overview contained all of the marketing information and why you should use an API. And the documentation was geared more at the developer and how to use that, that API specifically. So although that worked well for us in the past, here you can see what we've used in the past. Um, now, this worked well for us for a, a number of years, but it was we realized it was very restrictive. So by asking the API owners to complete a, a single markdown file, it kind of restricted them to what chapters they wanted. Um, if they had a very basic read-only API, then, then this, this worked fine. But if they had a more advanced API with multiple chapters, different resources and endpoints that they needed to get across, then it, it was no longer fit for purpose. So yeah, one of the big tasks we undertook was how can we improve this for the developer? How can we streamline it, make it easier? And also reduce the number of tickets into our kind of tech support team. So what came off the back of that was an enhanced journey. As well as improving the journey externally, um, it's also improved our internal process. So API owners are now able to complete a number of markdown chapters. So as a team, we've set a, a kind of minimum required kind of baseline. So we want chapters X, Y, and Z, and then feel free to add on to that. So X, Y, and Z is your the very the minimum viable information you need to connect to an API such as the, the endpoints, the response messages, and so on. But if you do have a, a fairly substantial API with lots of um, configurable options and so on, and we will lay that out. So here, what you can see, Barclay Card Smart Pay Connect, this is an example of those chapters. So as a, again, going back to the minimum requirements for what we need, we, we want an introduction and we want the response messages. So you can see in here, you now have a breakdown of all the chapters. You've got an overview, um, you've got your features, how it works and how to get started. And from our research, we know we, we have kind of two, two audiences that visit these pages. We have our marketing team or business owners that are looking for an API. And that's where the overview comes in. Um, this is where they can read all about the, what the API does, how it'll benefit them, and, and the features that it offers. And then you have your developer audience that come here looking for specific information, um, such as your, your requests and so on. So <clears throat> yeah, this was a year in the making, and we're super proud that we managed to get it live earlier in the year. Um, now, as well as um, introducing this new enhanced documentation, one of the key things that we had, we did have to consider, again, going back to accessibility, but ensuring it's all inclusive. So um, you'll have to take our word for it, but everything is tested with, with screen readers. Um, so if you're to load a screen reader on this page, it, everything is as it should be. 
it's it's very easy for the developers to tab through and use that keyboard navigation. So you can see here, I'm tabbing through, and we have our focus areas um, highlighted. And as well as this kind of chapter navigation, it is all everything is accessible by keyboard. Um, now, this was a, a massive task to ensure that we wasn't just introducing a new set of documentation standards, but also making sure it remains accessible, because that's that's one thing we don't ever want to lean away from. Um, we want to make sure everything is, is accessible to all users. So last year, we, we undertook a number of um, kind of research programs to see how the platform could be improved and where our shortcomings were. Now, one of the key things we found was that when a user logged in, um, the, the screen you see now, the dashboard, this looked very different. Now, the dashboard was, it, it was very black, but the dashboard was very basic and it simply told the user that they had no apps and no APIs. Um, and so until they did have an app and an API, then they wouldn't be able to see anything. So what we, we noticed was this was a kind of a dead end for users. They tended to drop off at this point or contact uh, our L1 support team to see how to get started. So just some small tweaks we made. We, we've simply introduced this step process guide that you see on the screen now. So one of the big tasks we undertook was we went away as a, a team and we wrote a number of knowledge guides for the most common questions we're asked, um, or the, the most common questions the support team face. Now, they tend to be, how can I connect to a sandbox or how can I connect to a production API? Um, and a number of authentication methods and so on. So as a team, we went away and wrote all these guides that kind of covered all of those issues developers face. Um, and what that's allowed us to do is to kind of fold these guides into our journeys. So what you see now, when a user logs in, they're, they're kind of signposted as where to go. Um, straight away, you can see, um, if you have nothing, then visit the catalog to find the API that that would help you with your project. And you can see that <clears throat> we, we link the developer straight in. So they don't need to, we're trying to reduce the cognitive load essentially and really help them along on their journey. Secondly, we then explain how you can access the, API, the Sandbox API, sorry. And we, we link directly to a, a knowledge guide article on that. And then lastly, we also explain to them how they promote that API sandbox to a production environment. Now, although it looks very basic, there's quite a lot of clever tech going on in the background. So as a user, if you have connected to a sandbox API and everything's going swimmingly, when you next visit this page, if the platform knows that you've made a successful sandbox connection, it will prompt you to promote your, your app to production. So we can see you've made a successful connection. So we're just asking the user, do you want to promote this to production? If not, here's a guide so you can bookmark this for later and really trying to help them along on their journey. Um, and what we've noticed is that the, the bounce rate, the exit rate for this page has dropped drastically. Um, and we're also noticing a lot less tickets being raised into the, the support team. So although it's a very small tweak, it's actually uh, had massive benefit for the platform. Cool, so that is the developer.barclays.com platform. Um, and we look forward to your questions. Thank you. I'm going to thank Liam uh, and also Jake Easton, who was uh, part of creating this demo. Um, due to an internal regulation, uh, they are not able to join uh, this stage real time, although I think that Liam is here in the chat. So the questions that uh, Cassie was asking 
Um, I will leave that to Liam uh, to decide whether he can answer that real time or, or through an email. Um, I was planning in Oz Kingdom about the accessibility champion program and a little bit more about the design considerations. And I would like to refer you to the API The Docs podcast. I don't know if you know about that. Uh, so API The Docs has a podcast and both uh, Liam and Jake were our guests uh, a while ago. And then we were talking uh, about uh, exactly these things. Um, so you can have uh, some more information there. 